Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 189. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics released the 2nd of September 2015, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Daredevil number 18. The final chapter in the autobiography of Matt Murdock is written by someone who may surprise you. Not everyone survives this phase in Daredevil's life. Find out who lives, who dies, and who has changed forever. Marvel Editor-in-Chief Axel Alonso spoke about Wade and Samney's conclusion to the series, quote, They're going out on their own terms. They had a story to tell, they're wrapping it up, and I really look forward to seeing what they do next. Close quote. At number two, we have Detective Comics number 44. The Joker's daughter reveals her plans to take on Batman and his task force, and they might prove deadly to Gordon, Bullock, and Montoya. Series writer Brian Buccoletto will be leaving the title with this issue and shared what readers can expect. Quote, There are a lot of threads we've set up. Sometimes you get ambitious with all the things you want to establish in the storyline, and in this case, we had four issues to finish it. But you'll see a lot of things we set up in that original eight-pager all tied up. This is obviously a swan song for Detective Comics, so I had to make sure the story is finished. So you'll see the fight scene. You'll see the resolution of that. You'll see the resolution of Detective Yip and her betrayal of Harvey and the Gotham Police Force. And you'll see a new partnership formed with Harvey and Montoya, one that hopefully the next creative group on Batman will pick up. Close quote. At number three, we have Future Imperfect number five. With all things conquered and every foe crushed, Maestro attempts the only challenge left, Deicide, the killing of a god. Finally, Maestro vs. Doom. Series writer Peter David explained the concepts behind the Maestro. Quote, Early on in my run, I came to the conclusion that, because he'd suffered abuse as a child, Bruce Banner was already someone suffering from what was then called multiple personality disorder. The concept was that the explosion that released all the gamma rays did not create a problem as much as exacerbate an already existing one, that this guy had the potential to be a new version of his father. The maestro was the ultimate take on that idea, that Bruce Banner is not necessarily a nice guy. Close quote. He went on to say, quote, I don't want to give away everything. I will tell you this. There's a character in the series referred to as the boss, a person who oversees the battle against the maestro. I feel pretty confident in saying that no one will be able to guess that person's identity until it's revealed on the last page. Close quote. At number four, we have Broken World number four, four. Final issue, Elena reaches the secret emergency rocket location that might help her reach her family, but she's got cult members and security on her tail. Series writer Frank Barbieri expressed the difference for him with writing this story. Quote, this project has been a very big challenge for me because for the first time I'm truly stepping outside a lot of the tropes of various genres and focusing entirely on character drama. I love writing superhero stories, pulp-inspired action and fantasy, but Broken World has challenged me to get back to the core of storytelling, character. It's certainly an ambitious project, and I have great admiration for Boom for letting me tell it with them. Close quote. At number five, we have Plutona, number one of four, a brand new heartfelt superhero series by Jeff Lemire and amazing newcomer Emmy Lennox. Series artist Emmy Lennox described the series, quote, It's about a group of kids who run into the dead body of a superhero in the woods randomly and what they decide to do with that body and how it affects them, close quote. Series writer Jeff Lemire expanded, quote, It's part of a tradition of stories that Emmy and I both really enjoy, like Mean Creek and Stand By Me, where you have this group of kids who are confronted by something very dark and outside their experience. This thing, it changes them, and they aren't equipped to deal with it because they're children. It takes them on a dark path, and you get to follow them. The superhero stuff and more fantastic elements of the world are really background. The book itself is very focused on these five kids. It's a very character-driven story. Close quote. Rounding out the top ten at number six, we have Silk number seven. Secret Wars takes its toll on Silk as she experiences her last days. As the sky literally falls, will Cindy Moon find her family? At number seven, we have Squadron Sinister number three. It's all-out war between the new universe heroes of Newtopia and the Squadron Sinister. But are the Sinisters a greater danger to themselves? And which Sinister is going to die? At number 8, we have Miracle Man by Gaiman and Buckingham, number 1. Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham's Age of Miracles begins. Two years have passed since the decimation of London. Miracle Man presides over mankind's golden age from atop Olympus. Pilgrims climb its miles-high peak to petition their new god. Each carries hope that they are pure. The motives they conceal, however, 
Miracle Man explores infraspace in the opening chapter of Retrieval, but just what or who is he looking for? Including material originally presented in Miracle Man number 17, plus bonus content. At number 9, we have Silver Surfer number 14, The Last Days, Universe 2.0. Given unheralded new power, the Silver Surfer is tasked with remaking the entire universe. From the laws of physics to the origins of new life itself, what strange new cosmos will Norinrad will into being? Meanwhile, Don Greenwood has a far less intimidating task. All she has to rebuild is planet Earth. Plus, if the Surfer, Don, and Toomey were the only survivors of the previous cosmos to make it into the void... Why are they not alone? And at number 10, we have Thor's number 3. After a series of brutal and mysterious murders, the Thors have finally brought in a suspect for questioning, Loki. But how does one get the truth from the Prince of Lies? The ultimate Thor is about to find out. For the best of the rest of this week from DC Comics, we have Batman Beyond number 4. Everyone knew he wasn't good enough to be Batman, and now Tim's mistake has put humanity at risk. But when all seems lost, an old friend takes him back where it all started. Will a gift from the past give Tim what he needs to save the future? Next, we have FBP Federal Bureau of Physics number 24. Out in the back of beyond, in the place between time and space, the future of everything rests in Adam's hands. Nothing expands forever. And we have Green Arrow number 44. The secret mythology of Green Arrow's new pet wolf is revealed. Plus, Oliver's woman troubles escalate as Tarantula bullies her way into his life, demanding his help in the battle against the skeletons. From Marvel Comics, we've got Age of Apocalypse number 3. The race to claim the legacy virus before it's released by the human insurgency grows desperate. The X-Men and the Horsemen of the Apocalypse vie for a weapon that can mean victory for Magneto's rebels or ultimate power for the forces of N. Sabat Nur. Next, we have Groot number 4. Groot assembles a ragtag band of aliens to go after Eris and finally save his long-lost pal Rocket. An explosive surprise sets his plans off course, though. We've also got House of M number 2. What do Quicksilver and Namor have planned for Magneto's kingdom? Is the heir apparent to the House of Magnus a traitor? Next we have Mockingbird Shield 50th Anniversary number 1. Mockingbird has always been one of Shield's best agents, but what happens when someone close to her is murdered? Forced to take matters into her own hands, someone is bound to pay. New York Times bestselling author Chelsea Kane joins the Marvel Universe to tell a story of bloody revenge. Plus, a special bonus story by superstar young adult author Margaret Stoll, writer of upcoming young adult novel Black Widow Forever Red. We've also got Spider Island number 3 of 5. The madness continues as Venom and his squad of monstrous heroes wage all-out war on the Spider Queen. To reclaim a Manhattan completely overrun by the Queen's Spider Army, Venom will need a little help from his friend. Which friend? We'll give you a hint. Thwip. And we've got Star-Lord and Kitty Pride number 3. The Marvel Universe is dead, but hashtag StarCat lives forever. From IDW Publishing, we have Danger Girl, Renegade number 1 of 4. Abby Chase is renowned across the globe as a brilliant young archaeologist and a bit less renowned as a member of the super-secret spy organization known as Danger. But what set of circumstances led Abby to become who she is? Who trained and shaped her into the remarkable person she is? Now, for the first time ever, Danger Girl readers will find the answer to these questions and more in Danger Girl, Renegade. From Image Comics, we have Jupiter Circle number 6, A Love Triangle Disrupts the Team, Final Issue of Volume 1. And we have Lazarus number 19, Poison Part 3, One Bullet Makes All the Difference. From Valiant Entertainment, we have Imperium number 8, You Never Saw This One Coming, Broken Angels Reaches Its Unbelievable Climax as Divinity Takes Hold. Toyo Harada is the most powerful mortal man in the world. To build his Imperium, he has collected monsters. Now he comes face to face with a god, confronted by the unfathomable depths of a man who is no longer a man, who can only be called divinity, Harada plunges his mind into infinity. Can even the unstoppable Harada survive the fall? And we have Exo Man of War number 40, Exodus part 2, two peoples, one world, can a man of war broker peace between Earth and the alien nation it now harbors? In the aftermath of a horrible tragedy, Eric is trapped between the two worlds he's sworn to protect. As Exo Manowar, he has made it his mission to protect the Vine's mass of alien refugees, but his people want them dead, and Gate wants them gone. Now an old enemy will attack Eric at his weakest moment, and the Earth may pay an impossible price for Eric's loyalty. 
Exodus unleashes a monumental new chapter as New York Times bestselling writer Robert Venditti and Rafa Sandoval continue the series defining Exo Manowar epic of the year. Out in trades this week, we have AKA Jessica Jones Volume 1 alias trade paperback. Meet Jessica Jones. Once upon a time, she was a costume superhero, but not a very good one. Her powers were unremarkable compared to the amazing abilities of the costume icons that populate the Marvel Universe. In a city of marvels, she never found her niche. The self-destructive would-be Avenger is now the owner and sole employee of Alias Investigations, a small private investigative firm specializing in superhuman cases. When she uncovers the potentially explosive secret of one hero's true identity, Jessica's life immediately becomes expendable. But her wit, charm, and intelligence just may help her survive another day. Thrust into the midst of a conspiracy that reaches to the highest levels, has Jessica burned too many bridges to turn to old friends for help? Collecting alias number one through nine. And we have all new X-Men Volume 2 hardcover. The time displaced young X-Men continue to adjust to a present day that's more awe-inspiring and disturbing than they could ever have imagined. But will a tragic history repeat itself when Mastermind targets Jean Grey? And as one of their number departs to join the adult Cyclops' crew of revolutionaries, the teens encounter the uncanny Avengers, and young Cyclops meets the adult version of his brother, Havoc. Then, in the fallout from Battle of the Atom, Kitty Pride and the all-new X-Men's faith in Wolverine's Jean Grey school has been completely eroded. So where have they gone instead, and what will they do? And how will the teens react to their newest member, the ferocious X-23? Collecting all-new X-Men number 11 through 15 and 18 through 21, and X-Men Gold number 1. Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available, and I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers, and you can find them all on my YouTube channel at He's Got Issues dot com. You can also now find He's Got Issues on eBay at He's Got Issues dot com slash eBay for great deals on comics, trades, and superhero and pop culture merchandise with free shipping in the United States. And of course, you can still find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram to see everything I'm reading as I read it. There's links to everything in the About section at He's Got Issues dot com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and the League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.